Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today we're gonna to talk about underfill removal techniques on Apple PCBs and their benefits. All right, before we get started here, I wanna go over a couple of the, the tools involved in this so that you have them ready ahead of time. Uh, first and foremost, this is 100% necessary. You cannot get around this. You've gotta have yourself a little baby super sharp knife here, okay? Um, this is not a regular exacto blade this is a super cheap chinese number three blade you can't really get these from the exacto website um, i've only been able to find this specific one in the cheapest hobby knife kit it's usually included and man it is the best um, it is the sharpest finest point i have ever seen on one of these little hobby knife blades and it gets right through everything okay um, the next tool that you're going to need is some sort of hot air or some sort of heat. Okay, we can do this two different ways. You can either use a smart heating platform that's going to uniformly heat up the PCB, or you can use a hot air right here, and you can also get very consistent hot air. It really just depends on what you're used to working with. Um, I know a lot of people are starting to pick up the smart heating platforms, and they're really good for this kind of job. So. Um, Let's go ahead and dive on in and get started here. I'm gonna use the smart heating platform just as a base to hold the PCB, but I will be using the hot air to actually do this today. So let's go ahead and stick this in here. And let's jump on over. All right. I really like these smart heating platforms though. They lock these boards in so nice. All right. So, like I was saying, the the cheap Chinese number three blade here, um, I'll go ahead and show it to you, is a very, very sharp fine point blade. Okay, um, not even the number eleven is going to come close to this. It's like half of that. It is so thin. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and use 140 C, 70 airflow, and this is going to heat up the underfill and make it a little bit softer. Okay. Um, if you try and do this right now, there's the possibility that you'll bring up components because it's a little bit harder right now. Um, so let's go ahead and preheat the board a little bit. And we're going to actually kind of focus on this area right here. Okay. And you're going to see real quick why this number three blade is the champion when it comes to this underfill removal. Okay. So let's go ahead and heat it up just a little bit. Like I said, we're at 140 C at 70 airflow, and the airflow is not as important here, but that 140 seems to be the sweet spot on this type of underfill. Be aware, different parts of the board use different formulas. All right, so we're heating it up a little bit, and you can see here I've kind of bent my blade a little bit. I feel like this uh, is just, it makes it so much easier. Uh, Look at this. You can actually see the blades kind of bent to the side here. It just allows you to kind of get in there a lot easier and get this stuff up. So, all right, we heat it up. And you can see down here, it's starting to get really crumbly. And it just comes right off. No big deal, okay? You really don't have to try too hard to get this stuff off once you're using the right temperature here. Now, this blade doesn't really shine until you actually start going in between the components and if you already clean underfill, you already know that you do not stick a blade between these little O1 double knot fives. It is not a good idea, but with the number three, effortless. Watch this. I mean, this literally just gets right in there. Boom. No big deal. Bam. Bam. I'm sure some of you guys recognize that you know, you've used some of these bigger blades trying to do this exact same thing and you've knocked components off the board. Um, having an ultra fine blade like this is just, you know, it's, it's definitely the, uh, the best way to go. I mean, that was pretty much effortless. All right, look at that, very clean. Now, the thing about underfill is it shrinks, okay? And when it shrinks, it can cause complications with other types of repairs. Um, I definitely want to share a tip with you guys, and this tip was originally shared with me through another Justin, how about that, from OC Game Console Repair. Um, we were talking one day, and 
we were talking about some people that were having issues with doing touch IC on the opposite end of the board, actually kind of nuking this end of it, okay? And if any of you have ever taken a second attempt for a touch IC, nine times out of 10, they have torched the other side of the board, okay? And with that comes the fact that the underfill itself will actually shrink around some of these components and when they reach wetting temperatures, they lift off the board, okay? So this underfill removal is a great technique if you're doing reverse side BGA or even if you're doing BGA and there's just underfill around it in general, um, cleaning it out prior to actually taking the chip off can save you a ton of trouble. I'm talking about it can save your butt, especially if you're new and you're kind of concerned about damaging the board itself. So hey, I really hope you learned something today. In fact, if you uh, liked the video, go and hit right over down there and hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed and you want to start checking out all my stuff weekly, just head on over to the other side and hit subscribe. Now, if you are super about it and you want to learn everything that I'm trying to teach, whoop, boom, hit that notification bell, all right? It's really important. That way, every single time I upload something, it pops up right on your phone, your computer, whatever you're doing, all right? And hey, check it out. Maybe you have an opinion about what I'm doing right now. Or maybe you even used my technique on a repair and it worked for you. If any of these things apply to you, or maybe you just want to say hi, hit me up with a comment. I love them. Seriously, I love the comments. They're my favorite. Every time I get one on my phone, I'm like, oh yeah. And if you are one of those people that is about to look me up on Instagram um, to ask me what equipment I use, well, guess what? I already got you. Don't even worry about it. Hit the description, boom, right down at the bottom has everything in a big old list. If there's something that I didn't put on there, then hit me up on Instagram, the phone guy, check out my stuff, then hit me up and let me know what you need. And don't forget, I'm Justin, and this is The Art of Repair.